Hey, what's up everyone? It's Nick here from Modern Home Reno. This week I'm going to show you exactly the steps that I took to build this live edge and epoxy dining table. And I must say, it turned out sweet. So stay tuned. I attached the sides to the form using a bit of silicone and countersinking screws. <laughs> Ensuring that the bottom of the form is flat and flush with the 4 inch strip, I repeat this on both sides. And then using the same technique, I attach the ends to the form using silicone at every point that they meet. Again using a countersink and wood screws, I attach the sides, making sure that the bottom of the form is flat and flush with the 4 inch strip. I repeat this on both ends. Once all four sides are on, I then apply another small bead of silicone along the whole interior of the form. And then clean off any excess with a wet cloth and my finger. I then flip the form over and then tape all of the joints. This may seem over the top, but epoxy is really expensive and it sucks when it leaks out. So I don't want anything leaking out of this, so I just tape and glue and silicone everywhere I can. Once the form is done, I then cut the slabs to size, cutting these about a sixteenth smaller than the inside of the form. This way this would just slip right in. Once that was done, I then cleaned up all the live edge and all the cracks and the holes using a wire brush attachment in my drill. You want to make sure the loose bark is removed because you want to get the best bond possible with the epoxy. I then removed all the marks left behind from the router using an 80 grit sandpaper in my orbital sander.
30 liters because I had all those voids and cracks I needed to fill as well. For this application, I use Ecopoxy liquid plastic 2 to 1 mix ratio. I mix the epoxy for about 15 minutes on the low setting of my drill and then I let it sit for half an hour to let the air bubbles escape. That was a lot of fun. Anyway, once the epoxy is poured, I let it sit for about two hours and then I come back with a blowtorch and then blow all the bubbles out. This isn't 100% necessary because of the cure time, it lets all the bubbles rise to the top. I feel like it's more of a satisfaction thing because it looks cool. Boy, that was riveting. I hate sanding so much. I start off from 120 grit and work my way up to 320 grit using the same techniques as before. I give the table a final dust off ready for finish. gave the table a base coat of Osmo Oil Wood Wax Extra Thin. I applied this using a blue shop towel and let it sit for 8 hours overnight. I 
came back the next day and buffed off any residue. I repeated this step for the underside of the table as well. For the top coats, I used Osmo Oil Poly X. I applied this by wiping it on with a blue shop towel and then buffed it in with a white pad using my polished sander. I continued to buff in until all residue was gone. I let this dry for 8 hours and then continue the same steps on the underside of the table. Once the oil had dried, I then began to mark the position of the base. Ensuring that the base is sat centre of the table, I marked each elongated hole. I must note I had the base of the table made locally. I attached the base of the table using threaded inserts. So at each mark that I made, I drilled a hole at 3 8 of an inch thick, and then using tape on my drill bit as a depth stop. I then glued in every insert as I go along using 5 minute epoxy. I use threaded inserts instead of screws because this way you can take the tape. There it is. I'm extremely happy how this turned out. It was a super rewarding build for me. I love that the epoxy is so dark yet translucent. You can see through it in certain lights. It just gives it that classy feel. If you had any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. Also, go follow us on our social media accounts at Modern Home Reno for more of the day-to-day -day stuff. Peace.